And I could see you doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would. Yeah, because you're, you're not really thoughtful of like how you look. Wow. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, where it's more than a talk show. It's chocolate. Joining me on the show today is the real housewife of season 14, my sister, Miss June Jambalaya. Hi. Hi June, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. (laughs) As some of you may have noticed, uh, we are sitting on opposite sides today because June wanted to make sure to get her good side. Fortunately for me, every side is a good side, so all is well. God is fair. (laughs) (laughs) So June, on top of being a drag queen, you were also a good Southern church woman. What's the gospel that you're playing in your car right now? What's on the Spotify? Um, Kiki Sheer just came out with a new gospel album, so I've been listening to that. Um, obviously, the classics, Kurt Franklin, Hezekiah Walker, Mary Mary. She's actually, Erica Campbell is my first lady at my church in LA. Where you know. A lot of drag queens are bumping, like, Charlie XCX, yeah. but you're just driving, whipping down the streets of... West Hollywood, just take me to the king. It's funny because I always <laughs> tell people I'm I'm a mix of Yolanda Adams and Trina. You know, I got an ass so big like the sun as I'm driving to church. And then when I'm like leaving church, it's very take me to the king. The only thing fatter than your ass is your face. Ooh. <laughs> That's the entrance line for all stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, June Jambalaya, Jambalaya is spelled with all A's for vowels. I know some people get that wrong. Drag Race got it wrong on your talent show. <sighs> and even whenever they made your logo, they spelled it incorrectly. Mm-hmm. All A's. All A's. Can I tell can I a secret? Please. You want to know? I learned how to spell Jambalaya when it became my drag name. <laughs> <laughs> can I be transparent with you as well? well? I always had to like sound out the spelling of my name, but mm-hmm. it wasn't until after Drag Race when I had to like sign, write it. and I'm like J A M A B A L A Y A. That's how I. I know that there's probably like 50 signatures out there that say Morphus, and that's why I start the big J and just squiggle L A Y A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you don't hold it against the people spelling it incorrectly because you also. Well, oh, <laughs> I think they should have because it's TV, but. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's not right, but it's, but it's okay. okay. Speaking of Drag Race, unlike a lot of girls, you only audition one time. So you've been only been doing drag for about a year or so whenever you auditioned, got mm-hmm. on the show. Do you think you were ready for a Drag Race? Or are you content with the timing? Or do you think the jambalaya should have been in the oven a little longer? I honestly, swear to God, had no clue I was going to get on. I just, it was during the pandemic. I was bored and I just wanted to see what it took to put a tape together. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years did I think I was seasoned and ready enough to go on. I thought I had the talent. I didn't have the, all the ingredients to the jambalaya Mm -hmm. yet. So I guess, you know, they thought I did, or at least they thought, you know, it was a start. (laughs) Hindsight looking back, are you glad you went when you did, or do you kind of wish you would have got cast maybe a year or two later? Half and half. I do think by me going on when I did and having the epic fail (laughs) that I had, (laughs) it made me work so much harder Mm -hmm. and to get better. And I don't think I would have had that same drive if I just would have waited it out and then auditioned and just had a, you know, a good run. Mm Because some people do that and they don't always appreciate it when it happens. So when it does happen for me again, I I know I've worked hard and I'm going to enjoy it and it's going to be even better. But even in the short time that you were doing drag, you were working hard and making a lot of strides because just in like your first year or so of doing drag, you won like your first major competition in West Hollywood. Very similar to me, I won a competition in Little Rock called Drag It Out. Mm-hmm. You won a competition in WeHo called Dragged Out. I had never lost a competition until I went to Drag Race. Mm-hmm. I had been competing in WeHo, um, Pickles, Flaming Saddles, when that was open, mm-hmm. dragged out, drag competitions downtown. I had never lost a competition, like performance wise, mm-hmm. until I went to Drag Race. I was like, if that's if I'm gonna lose, I'm happy to lose there. Yeah, but but leading up to it, we did have a very similar journey. I think the only thing difference between you and me is that in the first year I was doing drag, I actually wore cosmetics. June, are you wearing any cosmetics in this picture? I just thought you were gonna say in the first, you know, the difference between you and me, I dance. Well, it didn't help you none. But like, <laughs> were you wearing any cosmetics in this picture? Okay, you. fun fact. This is after, I think I did three numbers. Mm-hmm. 
I and you just took it all off. No, I was not painting myself here. I actually Well no one was. I know I went to the mat counter. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the mat counter. I paid my fifty dollars. This was the finale. And actually those are my still some of my friends. Uh Brendan Lewis, Devon, um, Chase Runway, which is one of my favorite queens out of New York. I paid fifty dollars. And I did a purple eyeshadow, a purple lip, my real brows. But I guess after sweating and, you know, mm -hmm. giving so much to the audience. Yeah. It, it's giving BB cream. My skin looks great. <laughs> but we've was, come a long way. I was looking through the archive. I was like, that's not June. That's Ty with yeah, the lipstick on. That's Ty in a 1B30. In a 1B, always a 1B30. Oh, always a 1B30. Yeah. <laughs> If there's one thing you value is consistency, mm -hmm. always. <laughs> a one beat thirty. But you, your makeup always is very soft because prior to the season, I don't know if you're aware, but a lot of people were speculating that you were a trans contestant because there was rumors of there being one or more trans contestants on the season, and a lot of people thought it was you, despite the fact that you're one of the few that was not. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts whenever you saw all the speculation about you for the season? Honestly, I kind of love it because like my drag aesthetic is everyone knows the real housewife of drag mm -hmm. and I really really try to like you know have that full transformation fantasy from Ty and June mm -hmm. I really like almost want to consider myself a female impersonator more than a drag queen and I was like if you think I'm a doll like trans women are some of the most beautiful beings on this earth and I'm like and you think I'm one like okay I'll take it I was all up in the spoilers because I wanted to find out I wanted to know every little bit I could know mm -hmm. about who I was about to, to prepare with. yeah and I was like look, looking at the rumors online so I was like okay June is a trans woman and then it came around to it everyone got out of drag and I was like wait a minute <laughs> I felt <laughs> lied to I was like the internet lied mm -hmm. but there is a very big defining line between like Ty and June what is June for Ty growing up I was raised by women of color and I love them so much and I'm so and just infatuated with women in general and so I was always a little extra feminine not necessarily it was me I just felt like you know I was just praising these women that I love so much and so now that I have June I really have discovered even more about Ty like I'm not as feminine as I think I am and I'm not as you know yes mama like mm. that but now June allows me to put all that energy into it and Ty gets to just be, you know, in his tie-dye shirt, Crocs, you know, getting a slushy. It, it gives you like that separation. Yes, almost. they're both me, but it's really is my Gemini. Like I actually mm -hmm. really get to be both sides. You get to live your Hannah Montana fantasy. Very much, yeah. best of both worlds. <laughs> what would you say has been more of a struggle for you in drag? Like standing out in a scene like LA or finding name brand shoes in a size 14 wide? I'm not a 14. I am not a 14. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not a 14. I'm just going by sight, I just assume. I am a 12 and sometimes a 13. <laughs> but Christian Louboutin, you can get them custom made. Mm -hmm. You just got to pay the premium. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Let me just make it. Some extra money you got to pay, how hard it is to find shoes. And I like consider myself an inspiring fashion girl. I'm not mm -hmm. like a full fashionista yet, but... If I was like a size nine and a half, ten. Oh, it's over. Oh my God. You're done. I even had a consultation for foot surgery. You get, like, you get your feet done? No, it's because he's in Miami and he told me, he's like, oh, it's just the, the wide is for the fat on the side. We can mm -hmm. shave that down, but you can't wear heels for three months. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I gotta do this on like off season. He said, just the first knuckle. Mm hmm. Yeah, just a little off the top. Oh, but if I was a size, I my, it would be blood as I walked because my all my shoes would be red bottoms. So on the season, despite the wardrobe malfunction in your talent show, do you think you should have been in the bottom whenever Alyssa Hunter was fake playing guitar? <sighs> True T, no. Like, I don't think my talent was the worst, but I do think I had the malfunction in talent, then there was, you know, a sizing issue with my runway. So overall, Alyssa's runway versus mine was, like, perfect even her talent she looked great there was no like malfunctions like she pre presented a talent without a talent and then um she her runway was just so good mm -hmm. so i kind of like do i think i was the worst in talent no but overall i get why i was there fortunately you ate orion's lunch so it all worked out uh, yeah i had fun with water me water me i had fun with yeah <laughs> So to address the elephant in the room, um, 
people that haven't watched the season, we lip-synced against each other. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I sent you home because I didn't send you home. Um, God say, sent, say it again. I didn't send June home. God sent her home. I don't know what and happened. And I helped. I sent myself with, I helped yeah. God out. Something, something happened. So whenever I was lip-syncing, I was very focused. I was like, I'm just going to pretend you're not there, do my lip-sync. Hopefully live to see another day. <laughs> Every time I turned around, there's a new article of clothing, on a the wig, floor. shoes. What happened? How, what what started the unravel? And like, how did it lead to where we started? I saw? started unraveling at, at Water Me. I just couldn't believe I was in the bottom. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. I'm covered in crystals. Like, I'm like, this, like, my, my jumpsuit came from Armenia. Like, I look beautiful. Um, and it just psychologically started to hit me like wow you're really here because you know once you get the call those three and a half weeks you're just preparing you're not even really thinking you're just going and I think it started to hit me and then like every time I stepped on the stage I was in the bottom and that was started to affect me because I started to doubt like well am I as talented as I think I am did I make the right decision coming so soon and yeah when I when I got to that lip sync with you I was just like well fuck it girl we're here let's just you know, rock out loud mm-hmm. and well, that explains what happened like mentally and like the decisions and what you did in lip sync. What happened with the garments and all the articles of clothing, the wigs, the shoes? You exploded. Yes. Okay. So first thing, my braided wig mm-hmm. was too heavy. I knew it was not gonna stay on my head. So I went and I stuffed the little pussycat wig, little bus mm-hmm. driver wig under it. Terrible decision. And I learned then I don't look good in short hair. No more chicken wigs for Jesus. Yes. And so then the rap that I had made for the dress, I had knew the song started off. I was like, oh, I'm going to pull the rap and just let it float down. It's going to be like just a moment. It wasn't. And I was like, oh, that didn't look pretty. Like, you know, you feel like that Mm -hmm. didn't look pretty. And so one of my shoes fell off. And I was just like, oh, fuck it. We're going to kick the other one off and really go in. And... I thought they were going to live for it, mm-hmm. but it was like, this bitch look a country ass mess. And I you, did. Yeah. Like whenever I was during the lip sync, I had no idea what was going on. Like I slipped on, a, I don't know what it was. The train. A tra- it was a train. It was the train. I slipped on a garment of some sort. Mm-hmm. I, I slipped on a piece of fabric and I saw shoes. I saw hair. I thought I was going home. I was like, it's Kylie Minogue. It's disco. I'm in a dress. I can't even move in. I'm done. I thought you were going home too. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I thought the writing was on the wall. Because then, because I was performing, and uh-huh. then I was noticing, because I started turning, and then you were just in the middle, and I was like, oh, she can't move in that dress. I was like, oh, I'm going to go even harder. I'm about to embarrass this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, no, bitch, you're really embarrassing yourself. You went full Tasmanian double. Yeah, I was like, oh, she's, I said, she's in that flag dress. I should look like a Republican. She cannot move. <laughs> and I was just like moving around you, and I was just like, oh, I'm eating this bitch up, like, mm-hmm. in my mind. Yeah. And when I watched it, I was like, you are literally eating yourself up. Like, it was the clip of Rue when my shoe, and, you know, and she and they pan to her, and she looks down. And you know when you get that. Mm-hmm. You already know. You don't even have to say anything. I remember, like, I did the lip sync. I was like, I looked around. I saw all, like, the carnage. And I was like, I don't know what happened. She either gave the best lip sync that's ever happened or something went wrong, and then you got eliminated. I was like, what happened? And I had to wait from the time we filmed to the time it aired in to suspense of like what occurred, what was happening around me. And they actually, fun fact, they actually spared me because- What did they cut? Remember the part in the song, I love it, I love it. I remember heel toeing from one end of the stage to the other. I kind of crip walked because my shoes were off. So I was trying to show some footwork uh-huh. and they cut it. And I was dreading. And then I, I did the ch- and cornbread even like, she said, bitch, did you do the chicken head to Kylie Minogue? So I was like, I love it. I love it. I, and I was literally crip walking across and they cut it. I wish they didn't. I'm very glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of things that were cut, something that people didn't get to see at home was actually your entrance. This would have been one of the most iconic things. Your entrance, as soon as you walked in, we're supposed to hit a mark, say our line, do a pose. You missed the mark and kept walking up all the way to the camera, and they cut it. Mm -hmm. Walk us through that moment. I was so nervous, like, walking in. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I'm here. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I remember cutting the corner, and they said, remember, stop at the yellow block. You went to the other. I was looking and I was like, oh, I'm going to walk. 
And so I was looking at the yellow, the furthest <laughs> yellow block, and which the furthest yellow block happened to be like, grab a fork, ladies, jump a light, serve. It was like right there. And it was just so embarrassing. Oh, I wish we would have got to see that. That would have been such a great moment because no one. And so me. And, and so you, no one in Drag Race has done that. No one has like gone all the way up to the camera. It would have been such like an iconic moment. Is there anything else from the show that was cut that you wish people would have got to see other than your crip walking during I Love It? Anything else you wish people would have got to witness? I think the hand, sto the hand sewer. Mm, your staple gun? Mm-hmm. For people that don't know, June is not a seamstress. She took a couple sewing lessons, right? Mm -hmm. Before the show. But she brought a handgun that like stapled stuff together, essentially, mm -hmm. like sewing it together. So while everyone else is running through the sewing machines, you were full on just staple gunning your garment together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember everyone, I pulled it out because I went through my, my bin and I was like, oh, these bitches aren't ready for me. I'm about to be safe. I just mm -hmm. need to make a, as long as I ain't got no bags, I'm good. And I remember, ch -ch 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 and like, Cornbread looked and said, bitch, is that a staple gun? And I was like, it's so crazy when you don't have the experience of drag race and like you look back at some of the things you were you did or would have done. I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, like they give you the call. You've been doing drag for like a year. Yeah, you were doing, 48 hours. Yeah, you, you were doing drag for two days when you got the call. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so like you weren't expecting them to actually give you the call. And then mm -hmm. you're like, oh, fuck, I need to take a couple sewing lessons. I took sewing lessons. I took an acting class. Mm -hmm. I and mean, this is still like soft opening when we were just getting back to normal with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like doing all this stuff while I'm trying to work. And literally three weeks. I was just a brunch girl. I mm -hmm. just had, you know, leotards and, you know, some pleaser boots. I didn't have like all that stuff you guys saw on the show was all new. And I didn't have a drag community or like sisters to mm. borrow and pull things from. Just throw it in the pot. I was like maxing out all the cards. Let's just like, yeah. <laughs> I did it the wrong way. Your cards or someone else's? A little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a strong, independent woman until she doesn't want to be. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> the shoes on my feet, my mama bottom. Yeah. But as far as the lip sync, I know like with the lip sync between me and Jasmine, people come up to me all the time and they tell me like, oh, you should have won. You know, they play in my face and lie to me like that, which is very sweet of them. Mm -hmm. Do people do the same thing for I you? Were they no, no. I've gotten the oh, you should have stayed. Mm -hmm. People, uh, people should have seen more of you. Like yes, that. like oh, oh, I'm so sad. You're gonna really want to see more of you, but I've never got the you should have stayed in that lip sync. I think me and my fans are very honest, and they know that she was falling apart, like literally. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but my fans lie to me, so. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Earlier you said that you were a Gemini. Is that the reason why you were so sweet and nice to everyone's face, but shady in the confessionals? Was I shady in the confessionals? A little bit. You were a confessional queen, for sure. I believe you said, quote, Orion's a nice lady, but I'll see her at the reunion. I think it's one of your quotes. Did I not see her at the reunion? We were sitting next to each other. I saw her up close. <laughs> Oh, you're not shady. You're just real. You're just yeah. honest. Yeah, you're just spitting. I saw all you guys at the reunion. Fair. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I would have said that for each and every one of you. If I I'd have to go through like the little drag wiki to see all the quotes, but I'm sure, pretty sure there was some shadier moments. In I there. would let me. I I remember my remember Orion. I'll see her at the reunion, and then uh, Orion's talent. It's not bad. It's just not good. <laughs> um, and then Alyssa, she's playing guitar. You know, I. I'm a Gemini through and through. Yeah. I, and it was like, the confessional for me was a diary. Uh -huh. Like, I just wanted to, like, I was just talking to my best friend. That's how I approached it. Mm. So that was what I would say to my best friend. It's just my best friend happened to be millions of people. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that you were, like, the first one officially sent home, you did have, like, a lot of confessional time. And I would say that you were one of the confessional queens of the season in that regard for the short time that it was. I am great TV. Yeah, I, I I thought your professionals were great. They were very entertaining. Thank you. I think you have really good energy like behind the camera. Um, <laughs> as far as that, with Drag Race being so like psychologically, mentally exhausting, people get a little more cantankerous as the season goes by. Do you think confessionals that you did would have been the same had you made it like to episode 10, 12? You would have had the same energy? For sure, because I am a reality housewife mm -hmm. like fanatic. So I would have, every time I went in there, I'd be like, 
okay, girl, it's the, this is like, yes, the challenges in the show is fun, but like I watch housewives for the confessional looks and what they're going to say, which they can't say, you know, to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So with drag race though, you went in given like housewife confessionals mm -hmm. as stressful as drag race was. Do you think had you made it like further in the season, it would have started to go a little Tiffany Pollard. I might have with snapped. With the stress. Yes, yeah. I might have snapped. That's what I'm trying to get at. I might have, which would have been even better TV. Mm -hmm. So, because when I snap, it's, I snap. Which they should have kept me longer see, to see it. That, that's what I was about to say. Like, that's why we need a more June. Mm -hmm. The confessionals, the Like, TV. I would have came in throwing wigs, pushing, like, walk, pushing a table over, saying mm -hmm. I need a cigarette, I don't even smoke. Mm -hmm. And just like, get the camera out of my face, I need a break. Yeah, yeah. all of that. <laughs> I would have gave a very good TV. Well, yeah. For Medley, I'd be like, oh, she, I would just fell to the ground crying, mm -hmm. like going to Rue trying to hug her. Like, I, uh, I need a mother. I need a mother right now. See, and that's why we need June back for All Stars. I don't care about runways. I don't care about challenges. I want good confessionals. Well, and now I care moments. about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> but still, you know what I mean. Yeah. Going through the annals of history, before Drag Race, you went to school for theater, dance, acting. Would you say your degree and everything that you did helped you in Drag Race? Um, it, I think it would have helped me if I stayed longer because doing a rusical, I have a degree in fine arts, doing an acting challenge, yes, you know, writing lyrics and rapping or doing a song, I think it would have helped me in the long run, but you know, I don't have a degree in design. What you're saying is that your degree would have helped you in the competition if your headband was glued down. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of the talent show and the design challenge, which I know we talk a lot about that because it's the only thing we got to see, but if, <laughs> as, speaking of those, if it, okay. if it was not for the design challenge, how far do you think you would have gone in the, into the competition until the next design challenge got you? Do you think you would have done well in the teasers? The next design challenge would have been fine because I would have been in the bottom to Sugar Mama. That's fair. Mic drop. That's fair. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, though, because a lot of people that don't know, you are a proud chairwoman of the Bay Hive. Mm -hmm. You are a car holder, a jacket carrying member. You have stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think by now, as many concerts as I've been to, I have put at least one of those kids through college. Mm -hmm. So as far as like the competition, though, I really think that like had you made it through that design challenge, if you didn't disintegrate, I think you would have done well in the teasers because you were acting degrees. I think you would have probably been in the bottom with me for Sugar Mama, and you would have ate my fucking lunch. And then they didn't eliminate anybody for like four episodes. Mm -hmm. You would have like gone through like most of the competition, I think. I'd be on Work the World. You'd be on Work the World right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you would have won Snatch Game. You either would have won Snatch Game, or you would have been sitting in the back with Deja, probably. Do you think you would have been in the Snatch Game, or would you have been in a lip sync tournament? I think I was really confident in doing Titus, and I felt very connected to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much material I had to be super funny. So Deja was the only one that was, you know, the star of that episode. Mm -hmm. So I think I might have been in the bottom with everyone else mm -hmm. too. Lip sync tournament. Mm -hmm. Would you have survived the lip sync tournament? I think I would have been yeah. all right. I mean, Telephone was in there too. And so, so yeah, there was some Beyonce in there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like even though the short time you did have, I wish people would have got to see a little bit more of the dance. They saw like the talent show and a little bit of like, like water me and stuff. But I think you had a lot more to offer in the show. But unfortunately, with the time you did have, your legacy was cut a little bit short. But you did have the legacy of having probably the most iconic meme of season 14 with the It's Chocolate. Are you happy with the It's Chocolate legacy? Because obviously, no. <laughs> obviously, you were not wearing a wig. You would have wanted to be seen in. I was not painted the you way. You were sweating. You were... Did you see the run of sweat no, we saw. on my face? Mm -hmm. I think that's why I have really prided myself in trying to be extra beat now mm -hmm. and really trying to like give the Never dog. again. Yeah. Never again. And, and because so many people have like drew it and like they share it, they have t-shirts. I'm like, I kind of hate that that's how people remember me looking a hot ass mess. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to like really flip the script when they see me now. But it really kept me memorable throughout the season and it kept me employed <laughs> throughout the season. Mm -hmm. So I can't, you know, complain too much about it. But yeah, I just really hate that that bus driver wig and that sweat and that awful red lipstick with no liner is what 
you think yeah, of it's like immortalized see, yeah and yeah. a tube dress and just no chest foundation just shimmer mm -hmm. <laughs> she's I think it set the tone for the season because it was the first official elimination. It had the meme. And then every person eliminated past that said the exact same line. I don't know if that was by circumstance or because we heard you say it or what. But mm -hmm. like it really. But not as good. Not as good. No. no. It kind of like set the tone, I feel. Mm -hmm. As unfortunate as it was for you. But yeah. So I, I, I honestly believe you are one of like the pillars of season 14 because of that. Mm -hmm. You're more than a pork chop queen. You are. The backbone of season 14. I'm the chocolate queen. You're the chocolate queen. <laughs> the pork chop. Oh. We always had pork chop. Now we got dessert. Hey. Grab a fork, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> chocolate <laughs> is served. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a pork chop season, only queens that are eliminated first, how well do you think you do? I would take it. You take it? It depends on who's there. Yeah, I got the list. You want to look see. over it? Only the U.S. seasons, original U.S. seasons, no All-Stars, original U.S. seasons, first eliminated. Okay, I don't think Shangela should be there because she has been back and she did All-Stars. By definition, she was the first one eliminated that okay. season. Okay, and Banji is an entity by herself. If B can compete for every spinoff they have and All-Stars multiple times, Shangela can come back one more time. So, looking at this, <clears throat> Can I pick the finalists? Yes. Shangela, James Mansfield. I think she's very funny. Mm -hmm. um, Shangela, James, Banji. And that last slot would be a toss up between Irene and myself. You put yourself in fourth place, tying for fourth? Only because. These queens like have been doing it so much longer, mm -hmm. and Shangela is. Li you don't think Drag Race without mentioning Shangela, mm -hmm. and Banji is probably the most infamous pork chop queen, and James Mansfield has really taken the reins and just you know created a whole platform for herself. This feels like Kelly Mantle erasure though. Where's she at? I don't know. <laughs> you ask me my opinion. <laughs> I'm saying what, what I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I think I would have the best success story. Because, mm -hmm. like, after going home first and then the whole it's chocolate, like, God, what a Cinderella story for me to take yeah. home the crown. But, I mean, it could be anyone because we're all going to be very, very hungry. This is like, you know, and I think if we did this type of, situation it should just be performance based all like everything mm -hmm. because we all went home first because we lost the lip sync so everyone needs to be able to like <laughs> perform at that level yeah can you imagine getting pork chop twice be the pork uh, chop if of the pork i chops? got eliminated it's like the opposite the exact the antithesis of jinx the winner of winners to be the pork chop of pork I, chops when i say they better have security Full I, I would literally destroy that. You you thought the first lip sync I was just I would the whole stage I would just yeah. take apart. I would take apart. So, do you think you would do better on an All Star season or another reality show entirely? Um, like a Big Brother, Real Housewives, The Circle. It's Real Housewives. Like obviously, if I could live my Real Housewife fantasy, just getting dressed, going to lunch, and you know, making girls trips, that would be the life but, so just follow me to the camera yeah but i think june now would do better on an all-star which housewives character do you resonate the most with portia williams portia with no hesitation mm -hmm. not nini just i portia. love nini i genuinely do but there is something so endearing about portia and i just really see myself with like you know sometimes i make you like you know silly dumb jokes and you know may not have all the common sense in the world but i am a girl's girl i am real and i will pop you in your mouth if you get out of line so i just you know hood rich <laughs> portia at the reunion you read jasmine saying jasmine kennedy the lip sync assassin who is assassinated by three non-dancers at once i don't have a question for this i just wanted to bring it back up again <laughs> okay so we're now we're gonna do a fun little segment uh, so I'm going to name some events or things that in pop culture, and you tell me if they're overrated or underrated. Okay. Yeah. You are the pop culture connoisseur of season 14, I feel. So I feel like you're the expert on these topics. Okay. So overrated or underrated? We'll start off easy. The Real Housewives Potomac. 
underrated. Those women deserve everything. They deliver every single season. And because there are sometimes, you know, with Atlanta, they go in and out and like um, Beverly Hills, you know, maybe like a little season. Not as spi- every single season, Potomac gives it. They they understand the assignment. Underrated. Uh, Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. Neutral. Neutral? You think it's it's rated as it should be? Yeah. I think we're very divisive, though. I know, but I feel like, you know, it was her first time performing, and then, like, she announced that she was pregnant, which is a beautiful thing. Um, yes, did we expect more? Did we expect a new song? I really thought she was going to bring out a guest artist. But, you know, she looked great. She did the thing. Well, you know, she did the thing. So, yeah. She'll just get that. I would have loved if she just gave out gift cards for Fenty. Mm-hmm. Like, they, were, they just fell from the sky. That would have been kind of Yeah, it's like, it's like there's a bunch of, like, middle-aged men who hate their wives. Now they have Fenty gift cards. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of white women that... The They're shape. still using Mary Kay. Yeah. <laughs> that are paying for $50 to get their makeup done at MAC. Uh, the, the green m M&M. and We're moving on now. The green M&M. <laughs> mm-hmm. I haven't had it, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, she's like an icon. People are debating about her. Do you think she's underrated? Is she an icon or is she overrated? And people just need to let her be. Like, it's not that big a deal. Tell us how you feel about she's the green. She's overrated. M&M. I don't care. I don't care. The green m M&M stands are going to come for you. I don't care. Overrated? I don't care. I like Skittles. Benifer, overrated or underrated? I'm going to say, because I love J-Lo, um, until I see a little bit more, you know, longevity, because, you know, J-Lo likes to change men like she changed her panties. Mm-hmm. Um, overrated right now, because, like, she's mm-hmm. getting a lot, but... It's all hype, right? Yeah, now. it's all hype. You know, they finally got married, they're back together. Mazel. Like, very happy for her. But in 2025, let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's see. That's fair. J-Lo looks great in green, too, by the way. Just a small side. The she big is. red boots. Overrated. I mean... Yeah, overrated. They're not cute. No? No. They're not supposed to be cute. They're camp. I think they were overrated for a split second, but now mm-hmm. they've died down. I think they're underrated. Mm-hmm. I hope they come back in like two years. As like general fashion. And I could see you doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would. Yeah, cause you're, you're not really thoughtful of like how you look. Wow. <laughs> no, that's the thing though, is that I'm hyper aware of how I look. So if I look bad, it's intentional. I meant to look that way. I'm, I'm playing chess. You're playing checkers. I'm playing chess. Oh, so, yeah, because when I look bad, please know it was not intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I look bad, you just don't get it. You just okay. don't get it. And if no. I look bad, I'm sorry. I try. <laughs> Haley Bieber versus Selena drama. I don't understand what's going on because I'm just going to say it's underrated, uh, overrated right now because I don't know what's going on because neither parties have actually spoken out. So until they speak out and address mm-hmm. it, I don't care. So it's overrated. I don't want to hear the speculations. I don't want to hear the he said, she said. I want to hear from the source. I mean, we haven't heard from the source. but I think that's why it makes it even juicier because it leaves so much speculation. I know, but it's it's driving me crazy. I I don't keep up with celebrity stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't read the tabloids. I don't care. But something about it is so interesting. There's so many layers to this onion. It's so fascinating to me. I love Selena Gomez, though. Uh I think she's a gift. Yeah, regardless of what happens, like I feel like she's the innocent party in it, just based off what I know yeah, right now. I, Selena's gonna always be innocent. But to me, the drama's underrated. I'm like, we need more eyes on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like leave the people involved alone, but please, more speculation videos, please. Yeah, Julia Fox, underrated. That bitch deserves. She's it underrated. All. That bitch deserves it all. Mm-hmm. She deserves it all. I agree. She I, knows what she's doing. I feel like people like look at her like she's kind of like this dumb gold digger. I think she's one of the smartest people in the industry right now. I did it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's like so hyper aware. Mm-hmm. And yeah. She's camp. She is camp and she she's knows it. Camp. Yeah. She knows it. She's not like in an unintentional camp. Like she knows she's camp. That's that's the type of camp I live for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the big red boots are trying too hard to be camp. Mm-hmm. Julia Fox. It's like, it's like she is trying, but also at the same time, she's I'm kinda... trying, but I'm not trying, but I'll never tell you I'm trying. Yeah. She's that's like the sweet spot. Yeah. I agree. Julia Fox underrated. Austin Butler's Elvis accent. Overrated or underrated? <sighs> Overrated. He just needs to stop. Yeah, I agree. It's over. You think it's real? 
do you think he actually is talking like that because of the method acting? Or do you think he goes home and he's just like, ooh, God, I can stop talking like that? Yeah, I wonder, like, is he at home? Like, yeah. You think he's, like, in a Wendy's drive-thru, like, can I get a whole, whole, whole? Do you think he's doing all that? Or <laughs> Probably no? not. I no? don't. I don't. I think that, yeah, he can just, he can drop it now. We get yeah. it. Overrated. The gig is up. Yeah, I agree. The, the gig is up. The movie's the, out. You the, already got the yeah. awards. Just... Maybe he needs to see something. Heidi Klum's worm costume from Halloween. Overrated or underrated? Neutral. Like it was neutral. She got was she, it, it was good. You think the hype she got was like good mm-hmm. enough? Because she's the she is one of the queens of Halloween. Mm-hmm. She did it. Yeah, I think it was underrated. I loved it. You I thought it was so get, camp. She need more. I mean, she okay. got a lot of hype. Mm-hmm. But I think could have used just a scotch more because just a... it was just so extra. I thought it was camp. She's like laying on the floor as a worm, just doing an interview. Yeah. Okay. Last one. RuPaul's Drag Race. Overrated or underrated? We're not overrated. Like, Drag Race right now deserves everything. So what it was to what it is now, and, like, it just keeps getting bigger. And, you know, it's scaring people. And, you know, they're trying to take it away. And they just keep saying that it's not going anywhere. So. Underrated. Underrated. And we deserve more. Mm -hmm. More. We deserve another Emmy. It should be June Jambalaya with a fake Elvis accent in the movie's very nice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. I th- for a split second, I thought you were Austin Butler for a split second. <laughs> See? I'm Kim. You oh. never knew. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have and the last of my cards. So, June, where can people find you? What do you have going on? Um, I'm touring, getting ready for summer, all the prize, all the shows. You, I normally post them on my Insta story, not my grid. That's tacky. Um, <laughs> you better read the old things. Um, so yeah, you can find me, and then like all my videos and things I've done mm-hmm. on YouTube. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you guys, I forgot to mention, if you guys are not following her already on YouTube, June for all the looks she had on Drag Race, she made music videos for them, amazing content. First queen to ever do it. The first queen to ever, and like it was high quality stuff too. It wasn't like bedroom music videos. You had a camel and all the, everything. Sex. Definitely check out June's YouTube channel. Thank you for having me. I should have been here first. Like, you kind of owe me. Oh, you know. No, you sent me home. You, like, that's a sisterly thing. I sent you home. Rue did. Yeah, you really didn't send me home. <laughs> like, <laughs> and we were being honest. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't think too many people are chomping at the bit to be in, like, my guest room with a... No, I've, I've watched it, and I love what you're doing, and I'm happy for you, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And I'm happy to, you know, still some of your fans. Mm-hmm. There's something about like your your voice, like the effervescence. Whenever you say "I'm happy for you," it feels like condescending, but also warming. Everyone, okay. My whole life, I have always gotten everything that I say. People are always like, "Is he being? Sh- is she being shady? Is she being sweet?" People can never decipher. Mm-hmm. And my mom's like, "You have a very endearing voice, but it's also the way it sits. It's, it's a little shady. It's very bless your heart. Yeah, like yeah. I'm happy for you. Yeah." Maybe it's the southern women I live around like. Yeah. Sweetie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the brand. But that is all the time we have. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in next time whenever we have somebody else. More famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bar is low. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh my god. Tell Jada I said hey, she was beautiful on Sunday. I know I was. I know I was. Where I can't see oh.